Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. We got a jam-packed show for you today with five massive stories. As always, we got timestamps down below so you can skip around to the news you care about most. Nintendo addressing leaks and uh, trying to do something about that stuff about uh, some huge sales data, uh, getting to play a current really popular game on Switch absolutely for free and even having the time to beat the game if you like uh some huge sales data coming in uh potentially two different ips going weird places one a massive ip coming to nintendo switch from nintendo uh and then one nintendo actually releasing possibly their first ever native exclusive over to pc what what is going on now before we get into that hey we are on our road to 80 thousand subscribers Woo! <laughs> when we get there giving away a replica master sword uh an actual steel blade from breath of the wild along with a replica hylian shield and deku shield from ocarina of time yes uh those giveaways don't begin till we get to eighty thousand. it's just kind of showing you uh what we have coming up for that also by the way just a minor small note nobody has to care it is my birthday and so you can actually join our birthday celebration tonight at 8 p.m. Central. We're going to be having a live stream for that and having a ton of fun. But you're not here for that right now. You're here for the news. So let's get right into it with our first story. And this is that Nintendo is actually attempting to combat leaks at the company. We all know about all of the leaks that happen at Nintendo. One of the leakiest companies in the world, right? Oh, not really true. I know we could talk about the Nintendo Insiders. We could talk about all of the media and the games and the hardware leaks. Nintendo doesn't actually seem to care about that stuff. That's not actually what Nintendo's concerned with, and they're not really addressing that because they just don't care. It's basically free marketing for them. What they do care about, however, though, was a couple years ago, Nintendo actually got hacked, and this hack was a Giga leak. That's what it's referred to online. If you look up Nintendo Giga leak, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff out there. This hack included a ton of personal information on basically every employee at Nintendo, not just personal email contact addresses, but actual emails, internal emails to different employees. Uh, we got to see a bunch of prototypes that never came out. Uh, we learned about games that were made that maybe never came out. We learned about the background of some games that did come out and so much more. Uh, it was obviously, outside of the personal information, a really neat thing for Nintendo fans, but also something that companies never want to see happen and brings up a lot of concerns with people's personal data. Hey, if Nintendo's personal staff files can get hacked, what stops people from taking our credit card information and our account information and everything else? So it is a big concern and obviously a big concern internally because what's going to stop this from happening again? Well, Shintaro Furukawa at the recent shareholders meeting addressed this very thing because it's obviously a huge concern for shareholders because what happens if financial data starts to leak out there and uh, hurts the bottom line for shareholders? Obviously, that's going to be a big concern for them. So here's what Shintaro Furukawa said at the recent Q&A investors meeting. We are taking a variety of initiatives to address information security threats and vulnerabilities. For the services we provide, initiatives include cooperating with outside specialists and conducting diagnostics to check for security issues. In addition, as part of our internal system for information security, we introduced the information security management system in 2017, which didn't stop the giga leak, and has set up our information security committee. Policies for information management have been established and we have adopted both physical and technical countermeasures. In addition, we work with we work to raise awareness of information security among our employees through training and other means. Basically, hey, Hopefully no one in a high level accidentally gets hacked and boom, all the information's out there. So obviously this is going to be a big concern for Nintendo for many, many reasons. I know many of you fans maybe wanted the fact that uh, insiders and, and, and Jeff Grubbs and, and, and all the Emily Rogers of the world could just get shut down and Nintendo would send their ninjas after them and take them out. But turns out Nintendo doesn't really concern themselves with leaks from manufacturing about new systems like we got with Switch Lite and Switch OLED. They don't concern themselves with leaks on video games, you know, like Donkey Kong, Metro Prime, Remake, whatever. They, they don't care about any of that stuff. Uh, what they actually care about is obviously their internal documents getting out and preventing that and obviously personal staff information and their customer information. So that's where Nintendo is focused and concerned. They don't really care about all the other stuff, which is basically free marketing. So, yeah, um... So for those that want Nintendo to do something about a different type of leak, well, sorry. For those that are actually really happy Nintendo is aware of and addressing this stuff, especially after the Giga leak, 
yeah, this is mostly a positive story. You want Nintendo to take security serious. As cool as it is, some of the information we got out of the Giga Leak, it's still not the sort of stuff that we should really have to know about. So it is what it is, and let's move on to our next story. So uh, Nintendo and Ubisoft are doing something really, really interesting in Europe. And why it's only Europe only, I don't know. But from July 7th through July 10th, you can download the entire Mario Plus Rabbids game, not the DLC, just the base game, and play the entire thing. In fact, having played Mario Plus Rabbids, if you really want to, you could probably beat the game in those three days. Now, that you, know, you could beat it, including the DLC, but the DLC is not part of this. Uh, this is just their most recent game trial being added to Nintendo Switch Online, obviously only in Europe. And I, I find this to be rather fascinating. Uh, clearly, the intent is to advertise Mario Plus Rabbids, get more people to actually try the game, so they might be interested in Sparks of Hope, which looks to be a significantly bigger game. Uh, the file size difference is literally three times larger at 7.1 gigabytes versus like 2.1. It's a little bit larger than th the, the, the three times uh, for Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope being just a significantly bigger game than the original Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So, Again, I actually think the first game was really, really damn good. I love the hell out of it, but I also love XCOM and other games like it. Uh, Fire Emblem is, is, is sort of kind of in that realm, but not as action-oriented. So, look, I really enjoy these kind of games, so I naturally loved Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, plus the Rabbids don't bother me. And, yes, the game has been heavily discounted many times. I've seen it as low as $15 in the eShop at times. I think it's around 20 bucks right now physically and digitally. Uh, again, it's not a super expensive game to get, and Ubisoft did discount it the way they usually discount games, you know, not the way Nintendo does. Uh, however, there are many people that weren't even willing to try the game even at those discounted prices, because they just didn't think they would be interested. But guess what? For free, you could actually play the game July 7th through July 10th. And notably, Switch is region free. So you only need an account registered in some European country. And everyone across the world can actually play it for free. That's what's cool about region free. So the game trial might be Europe specific, but anyone with a Switch can actually enjoy it. So... Uh, there you go. I hope you guys give it a chance because I do think Sparks of Hope is going to be incredible. And I don't want you to miss out on that incredible game just because you were scared by the concept of what this was and never gave it a try. Free to try. You might as well give it a go. Next up, Capcom actually announced some cool numbers around Monster Hunter Rise. So for starters, Monster Hunter Rise has now sold 10 million units. It is officially the second best-selling Monster Hunter of all time, only behind World, the best-selling to ever appear on a Nintendo platform. And yes, these sales do include PC and Switch, and we aren't sure on the exact split. We do know they announced 8.5 million in sales on Switch some time ago, so we aren't sure if the additional sales that got it past 10 million, like what if it's 9 million Switch sales compared to 1 million PC? We don't know. Obviously, we know a majority the sales are on switch but we don't actually know the exact split at this time that being said they also announced that monster hunter sunbreak which came out last week hey guess what it sold two million which is actually really really good for standalone expensive dlc so congrats to them for that also by the way uh the dlc got an 87 on metacritic for switch and the original game got an 88 so they're very closely rated obviously massive quality control here and you want to know how big of a success Monster Hunter Rise is? I know we could say, oh, it didn't sell as well as World. It is the fourth best-selling game in Capcom history. This is the company with Street Fighter. This is the company with Resident Evil. And here we have the fourth best-selling game Capcom's ever made. By the way, Capcom's made three Zelda games before. Nope. Not anywhere near Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise is a massive success story and obviously shows that the partnership between Monster Hunter, Capcom, and Nintendo is likely going to strengthen moving forward, even though Monster Hunter is no longer like an exclusive thing. They had an exclusivity contract back in the 3DS and Wii days. They don't have that anymore, but clearly there is a massive benefit for Capcom to make exclusive versions for, for the Nintendo platforms that, you know, also are on PC. Uh, I, I think that this has been a fruitful relationship and is likely going to continue, but they're going to also continue on other platforms as well. Monster Hunter World has sold more, so there's going to be a Monster Hunter World 2 or some other continuation of that as well on the other platforms, I'm sure, at some point, but man, I'm sure Capcom's got to be really, really happy today with these sales. Next up is an interesting one because this isn't a rumor. This isn't a leak. In fact, there's not really any rumors in today's show. Instead, what we have is actual information from Nintendo, and this information is pointing to a major IP coming to Nintendo Switch from Nintendo's back catalog, and that major IP is 
Donkey Kong. Now, yes, there are rumors surrounding a Donkey Kong game in development for Switch dating back to last year, but we haven't had heard any new rumors about that game. But what we do have now is confirmation that some sort of Donkey Kong something is in the works for Nintendo Switch. And this is because they went ahead and applied to update the trademark for Donkey Kong back in May, and that trademark got published on July 1st, and it includes new verbiage that is very specific to Nintendo Switch, and this verbiage has been used on other IPs that Nintendo has created new games for on Nintendo Switch, and if people are wondering if this verbiage means something about a P, uh, like a mobile phone, they actually use different verbiage for Fire Emblem and Super Mario and stuff like that to infer mobile phones. So this verbiage does seem to be talking about a Nintendo Switch, even though it doesn't say Switch by name, because they want to obviously be all-encompassing for future devices. So here's what the new verbiage says. The, the uh, trademark now covers downloadable programs for portable and electronic consoles. And last I checked, Nintendo Switch is the only portable and electronic console Nintendo has actively been supporting. 3DS has been discontinued. So this is really, really exciting and obviously gives a hint that Nintendo's been working on Donkey Kong or multiple Donkey Kong projects. Could be ports, could be remasters. I know we got Tropical Freeze and they didn't have this trademark update at the time of Tropical Freeze. So kind of makes me think maybe not a port, but it could be a remaster or a remake. Also could obviously be brand new Donkey Kong stuff. So something's in the works. This doesn't mean it's ever going to come out. This doesn't mean it's going to see the light of day or that it's even going to come to the current Switch. Maybe it's the next Nintendo platform. But what we do know, at least from Nintendo, this is their own verbiage. Something's happening with Donkey Kong. And that's always exciting to think about. After all, one of their biggest success stories early on was the original Donkey Kong arcade game. Now, our last story is, this is, <laughs> look, Donkey Kong is cool, and this next story is weird, and it's weird in a way that shocks me, because I never thought that we would see Nintendo natively support a game on PC from their library, basically ever. We all know Switch, and Pretty much everything on Switch can be emulated pretty easily on a decently powerful PC and even on Steam Deck. Not everything works perfectly on Steam Deck, but I think it's a matter of time. I, I Look, Nintendo games have been on PC for a while, just unofficially. Nintendo has never actually released a PC version of one of their games. But they made an update to a game recently. They released this update, download it, it's whatever, uh, that has people scratching their heads. Not because there seem to be any major additions in this update. However, data mining of the update, which, hey, once the update's out there, anyone can access the data if they so like, uh, reveals something that hasn't been announced and is looking to have a hell of a lot of support. And that is... Mario Kart Tour apparently is being worked on natively for PC. Now, the original part of the data mine people quickly dismissed, and it was that they have now added mouse support out of nowhere, and people thought the mouse support could have been just a developer tool, right? Like, oh yeah, you know, when you're working on this game and programming this game and testing this game, a lot of times that initial stuff's going to happen in, you know, a, a, a PC application. So mouse support makes a lot of sense to emulate touch support. However, here's the problem with that. That's not the only support it got. They actually included a bunch of native PC emulation streaming, which is not needed for development purposes. You do not need to do that at all. The only reason to do that is to make the game play natively on PC, and it apparently includes you know, resolutions like 1920 by 1080, which is a TV-based resolution, not a phone one. This is wild that this is actually being worked on at all and leaked into this update and i often wonder why the hell would mario kart tour a mobile phone game be working on support for pcs of all things and i i honestly don't have an answer for you uh, i know mario kart tour has been rather successful uh, i think it's success stories actually slots it right behind fire emblem heroes now fire emblem heroes is successful from a a monetary perspective, whereas Tour has a much larger install base. But I find this fascinating that they're they're thinking about bringing Tour to PC. I get that it's not going to impact anything with the Switch or any sort of Switch sales for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but it is wild to me that we could be seeing Mario Kart Tour native on PC before the end of the year, and I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is. I guess... Nintendo, maybe with their mobile games, doesn't really care if they end up on PC because it doesn't impact Switch. And maybe they just look at it as another avenue to advertise the next big Mario Kart game. You know, 
on uh, on Switch or next gen or something. I, I honestly have no idea what Nintendo's doing with this. I think it's a really interesting story, and I'm very curious if it does get an official release on PC, uh, what that means and what Nintendo's logic and reasoning is going to be for doing so. I'm sure many of us can come up with our own reasons why this makes a lot of sense. There are plenty of mobile phone games, you know, like Raid Shadow Legends and stuff, that are totally available to play on PC. I just... I'm, I'm very curious uh, why they're making this decision and how they're going to make it available. Are they going to have their own game launcher? Are they going to, you, will you just be able to get it right through Steam? Is it still going to be a free download or is it something you got to pay for? I don't know, man. This is wild. And uh, if we somehow ever add controller support, not just mouse support, uh, that's, that's like next level. You're just full on playing a Mario Kart game on PC. Officially. Hot damn. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rumble Jets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode of Prime News. Again, I hope to see all of you guys at my birthday stream tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. I'll have that set up probably before this episode even goes live. Uh, and I'll, it'll be the featured uh, video on the channel. So hopefully I see you guys there. Otherwise, you know what? I hope you have a glorious rest of your day. I got a lot of stuff I got to get to today that's not even related to my birthday. It's not really much of a celebration of my birthday uh, in general today. Just a small lunch with my parents. But hey, you know what? The older you get, the less your birthday seems to get celebrated so it is what it is until you hit like those big milestones you get the big 5060 well i'm not 50 i'm not 60 you know where people start to celebrate every decade they're still on this planet i ain't there yet i'm not quite that old I feel like i still got a little bit of youth left in me all right guys catch you in the next episode